taking the time to come down and greet me and just just hang out for a little bit, right? Yeah, for sure. Whether you're gone for five minutes or five hours, yeah. they're just as excited the to see you. The reaction is always the same. Oh, I, my God, you're back. <laughs> yeah. Where have you been all my life? Right. I went down to put some recycling in, into the recycling bin downstairs, and I must have been gone for five minutes. <laughs> and I came back upstairs, and I opened the door, and it was like a uh, ticker tape parade. Mm-hmm. Every, like the dogs were like really excited. So, yeah, yeah it's it's that rejoining of the family. Yeah. It's like you know, yeah. I am on my own as well. So my dogs are my family. Yeah. So they provide a lot of companionship, a lot of um, emotional support, but also a lot of you know, a good reason to go outside. I mean, I am not the fittest person in the world, but I can tell you for sure, mm-hmm. if I didn't have my dogs, I wouldn't have as much motivation to go outside, to get out into the cold weather, the raining weather, whatever it may be, to walk them. And that keeps me active yeah. when I normally, you know, I'd look at the weather and be like, no. And it gives you that opportunity to really appreciate nature yeah absolutely because i mean i live downtown toronto yeah but if you head out in the middle of winter on a cold frosty morning you get to see the sunrise Mm -hmm. come out everything is quiet the Mm -hmm. snow is on the ground you Mm -hmm. know you appreciate all those things because you're not focused on doing something else Mm -hmm. you're not on your phone you're not at your computer you're not talking to anybody else you're just out there with your dogs walking them and it gives you that time to just, wow, things are beautiful. Dogs are always in the moment. Yes. Right? They're never thinking about yesterday. They're never wondering what's going to happen tomorrow. They're always just right right in that moment, right? And appreciating every single part of it. So, And that's really, like you say, when you take them out for a walk, they are amazed with everything. It may be the same route they've been on, but... Everything is new and exciting, and they just love every moment of it. Yeah, and different they, smells, yeah, yeah. different different things to yeah. look at and sniff and the yeah, rest of it. Yeah, yeah. So that's great. And if you guys have any comments about what makes you happy, the joy that your dog brings to you, we'd love to hear about it mm-hmm. below in the comments. Get involved, interact, mm-hmm. and let us know uh, what your dogs bring to you. Because I know a lot of people, actually my first podcast guest podcast guest Mm -hmm. was telling a really emotional story about a really difficult time in his life when everything was going bad there was a lot of you know um, pain in his life and what got him through that really difficult part in his life was his dogs Mm -hmm. and a lot of people have at least one or two of those stories where Maybe they broke up with their significant other. Maybe they went through some financial difficulty or a death in the family. And your dogs are always there for you to provide that amazing yeah. emotional support and to just make you feel that little bit better. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I think everybody would agree that dogs bring a lot of joy to mm-hmm. our lives. And there's a lot that they bring to the table. And... They don't ask for very much in return, mm-hmm. but it's, it's, I think, a really interesting discussion about, well, let's flip the script and talk about, well, what really makes them happy? Mm-hmm. What really makes a dog content, fulfilled, mm-hmm. you know, absolutely joyful? And I think there's a lot of uh, easy ones mm-hmm. that people kind of tick off and say, well, I, you know. My dog lives in a luxurious house or has access to this beautiful backyard or gets really expensive food and sleeps on a very expensive dog bed Mm -hmm. and, you know, gets like chicken and, you know, whatever else. But does that really fulfill a dog's, uh, you know, needs and and make them really, truly happy? So let's let's have a discussion. And again, if you want to get involved in this discussion because I always don't think of everything Mm -hmm. about and like somebody will say something to me I'm like oh I never even thought of that so what do you think makes a dog really happy 
I think, I wonder if Maslow ever did a hierarchy of dog's needs. Hmm. You know how they did it? Yeah, you know, they the did one needs. for human we, needs. We need yeah. those, uh, those basic things met like our our housing we need shelter we need food we need water and i think dogs are the same obviously they need that mm -hmm. but then when we get higher up what what do dogs need and and i think in addition to our love and our our attention i think most of them appreciate that um i think being outdoors come is just so natural for them i think getting outdoors and 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 if you're if you live in the city, finding that part, finding that green space, mm -hmm. um, I think is really important for them to get back to their roots and and back to their nature, right? And and experience that maybe a little bit of mud, maybe whatever, whatever the weather is, right? Get out in the rain, get out in the in the snow. That's where they come from. Absolutely. So if you think about how a dog perceives the world versus how you and I mm -hmm. perceive the world. Uh, human beings tend to rely primarily on their eyesight. So we, we see the world through our mm -hmm. eyes. Mm -hmm. In a dog's case, it's much different. Their, their dominant sense is their nose. Mm -hmm. So they see the world. I mean, they have good eyesight, but no, yeah. not the same type of eyesight that we have. But their mm -hmm. sense of smell is huge yeah. and it's way 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 better than ours will ever be and they actually perceive the world through scent right yeah you know what i mean like yeah. so if you or i smell a stew like a beef stew or something yeah. we'll smell the stew yeah a dog will smell the beef the carrots, the peas, right. the, the corn, every individual onion, you know, yeah. every individual ingredient they can pick right. out of that stew. So, like, their sense of, of scent is what gives them their perception of the right. world. So, one of the things that I always emphasize to um, people that ask me about this kind of stuff is expose your dog to a lot of varying scents. Right. So, let's say, for example... You say to yourself, okay, well, I take my dog outside all the time because I have a backyard. Yeah. Technically, that's true, but those scents don't really change because nothing really goes into that backyard, mm -hmm. maybe except for the odd squirrel or something like that. But when you take your dog outside into the world, yeah. it's a kaleidoscope of scents. Yeah. So they're, they're picking up on a whole variation of who was there what was there what did they smell like what you know you know pee or poo did yeah, they leave behind like that, that kind right? of stuff when, ooh, what did yeah. that dog eat when did they <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. and yeah. and it's it's like entertainment yeah. for them as yeah, well right. like it's it's Stimulating. really en engaging yeah, yeah for sure absolutely. so uh my advice to people is always you know take your dog for a walk yeah no matter if it's for five, ten minutes or for an hour, if mm -hmm. you can do it for longer, great. Yeah. But, you know, walking a dog, traveling um, with your dog, sharing that experience yeah. is something that for sure, in my opinion, anyway, yeah. tell me if you disagree, yeah, absolutely. is going to make them super happy. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it is about st stimulating their their interest and and. It, you know, giving, like you say, giving them something new to explore. Um, we all want to uh, explore new things, and we don't want things to stay the same all the time. Right? Totally. So I, I totally. don't think dogs are <laughs> any, <laughs> any different here. I'm getting cuddled by, you can't see on camera here, but I'm getting snuggled by a, a wonderful puppy MJ. here. Yeah, she, she snuggles right up yeah. here. So Maybe I can I'm the, the lucky the one here. We all right. Yeah, what a life. So yeah, yeah so, so there's stimulating their yeah. their their sense of smell, giving yeah. that, them that experience, that form of entertainment, even. And then you know an, another thing that is often overlooked is mental stimulation. So um, obviously we're gonna talk about physical stimulation because that produces a lot of joy as well. But mental stimulation. Is, is one of those things that engages a dog's mind and it gives them an opportunity to do something to 
mm-hmm. engage their mind. Mm-hmm. So what kind of things do you do to, to stimulate that? I mean... It's a good discussion. Hi, hi, yeah, whether it's hiding a toy and having them search for it, using their nose again, right? Using their, their strongest sense. Yep. I think they're completely mentally stimulated when they enter a new space. Oh, absolutely. I, I, think, that, I think that challenges them greatly. So uh, totally. taking them for a drive and then bringing them to a completely new park or, or area would definitely stimulate them yeah for sure well it could be something as simple as like you say like hiding some of their uh treats in and around your your house for them to go um do a scent and search kind of activity or obviously any kind of training Mm -hmm. so whether you're talking about basic training or more advanced training like uh you know, teaching them different tricks or getting mm-hmm. them to do agility or anything or like that. or dock diving, whatever they might It could be simple as fetch. Yeah. Like fetch yeah. is a fun activity, even though it's still play, mm-hmm. it's still a mentally uh, engaging mm-hmm. activity because like they're using their prey drive, like right. they're chasing that ball and then bringing it back and it's a fun activity. Yeah, so any type of training that you're doing with your dog, whether it's, you know, teaching them how to sit and stay or whether you're teaching them something like more advanced, you know, training is a great way to engage their mind. Yeah. And there's also problem solving. So Mm -hmm. if you're, if you do take them to a different trail and there's maybe logs across the trail, them figuring out, am I going to go under? Am I going to go over? Am I going to go around? I think that's definitely uh, stimulating them mentally. Yeah. That's that's a great point. Yeah. So there's a lot to do in terms of uh, mental stimulation. Mm -hmm. And again, we just, you know, not even scratch the surface. And I know there's a lot of, uh, they're called canine enrichment enthusiasts, Mm -hmm. which is another fancy term for saying like just different ways of mentally challenging your dog um, to give them that sense of accomplishment, that sense of fulfillment, which again is going to help them to be happy. Oh, absolutely. So another really important thing, I think, for, for dogs to be happy is to be social. Mm-hmm. Uh, human beings are very mm-hmm. social animals. Uh, we get lonely mm-hmm. if we don't get to interact and spend time with other people. Um, and I think dogs are definitely, you know, similar to us in that way, in that they crave social interaction not just with other people but with other dogs Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely so we we, you know we see the rise of all these dog parks um uh, walking clubs uh people run with their dogs in different clubs and that brings both people and dogs together which is amazing right we're killing two birds with one stone and so it's always sad to me when a dog hasn't been socialized when they've been young Um, And so they miss out on learning those skills on how to socialize um, well with other dogs, right? Mm -hmm. Whether they're threatened or they've they've had a bad experience early on. Um, I think it's really important for people to always try and socialize their dogs early so that they can uh, continue that as they get older, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I mean, one of the reasons why I have two dogs instead of one is that they get to um, live with another dog and there's been lots of studies that have actually shown that if dogs live together they have a longer lifespan they're healthier for it and the rest of it there's only so much you can do as a human being in terms of providing uh, companionship to your dog it's not the same as what another dog can do no and the way they play the way they snuggle the way they walk together it's very much like the they have that family mentality Mm -hmm. of being with other dogs. So the more interactions they have with other dogs, whether you can actually have another dog living with them or you can't because of whatever circumstance and you're just providing that in one way or the other, whether it be dog parks or your neighbors or your family who have other dogs, there's plenty of different options. And all those things will contribute to your dog's happiness. And I think, um, The last one, and probably the easiest and biggest one, is physical stimulation. Exercise, whatever you want to call it. 
Yeah. Challenging them in, in, in different ways, right? Not just a, a straight walk on a leash and straight walk back. I think that incorporating other ways of, of challenging the dogs, right? Letting letting them run off leash at a park totally. or um, whatever off leash area you can find. Um, being respectful of, of the area, of course. Totally. Right? Absolutely. Especially Absolutely. in the city. Um, yeah. Up where I live, it's it's far easier to find a forest where dogs are allowed off leash as long as they have good recall. Um, and then they can explore and jump over those branches and under the branches and and just let loose, really. And, yeah. and be, you know, be that wild wolf that they. <laughs> uh, totally. Totally. For <laughs> they, sure. They aspire to. I mean, if you think about it, a walk is kind of like the, the basic yeah. foundation. So if, if you can't do a whole lot, a walk is. A good Absolutely. starting point. Yeah, it's still and, going to stimulate all those areas for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, at, to your point, adding off leash. Mm-hmm. Okay, now you're stepping up a mm-hmm. bit, and then they get to explode and mm-hmm. really run. And and running is a lot of of fun for a dog, but it's also a way like they're designed to run, mm-hmm. and it's something that's for me. It's the most beautiful thing yeah. to watch. I can't express to you like how amazing it is like the feeling that i get inside when you let the dogs off the leash and they just take off yeah and they're just pure joy yeah absolutely when when they're yeah. in flight and especially yeah. when they're running with other dogs yes yeah as a pack or or yeah chasing each other they, they figure play. out their roles really quickly too eh? who's the chaser who's going to be chased that's really amazing to watch yeah i mean mj yeah. for example is very young she's a year old yeah and she loves being chased right she loves like the other dogs yes you know coming after her and she's super fast yeah. and all that kind of stuff and yeah. she likes to use her agility to turn corners and right. do all that kind of fun stuff so it's amazing to watch Mosley likes to chase. Yeah, so it works out good. Great match. <laughs> That's right. Match Perfect. made in heaven. Yeah, for sure. Everybody's happy. Yeah, and I think if you if you then take it up another notch after that, then you get into things like taking your dog swimming, mm-hmm. taking yeah, your right. dog hiking, right. you know, going out into the Camping, woods, yeah. finding a trail. Totally new doing, environments. Yeah. Doing those things. And if you think about tiers right yeah. so your walks are gonna be your bread and butter mm-hmm. every single day i mean i always recommend at least three walks a day mm-hmm. morning afternoon evening whatever and then one at night and if you do five ten minutes a walk that's about 45 ish minutes a mm-hmm. day you know it's yeah. not a huge amount no. of time but i think that's kind of like a good basic nice space starting point mm-hmm. And then on top of that, so if you're going a little bit less, is like off-leash time. Mm -hmm. So I always recommend, again, at least once a day they get some off-leash time Mm -hmm. to really do that explosion Mm -hmm. and like, you know, happy time, running time, whatever you want to call it. Um, Have a bit of that freedom. And then, you know, once you're, you're getting up into other things like going camping, going hiking, mm-hmm. going swimming. I mean, it's snowing today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Playing in the snow. Playing in the snow, doing all that other stuff. So <laughs> those things can be like less often. You don't have to do them every single day, obviously. I mean, if you have access to it. Yeah, lucky you. Yeah, even better. Yeah. But if you don't, you know, take a little trip, throw them in the car, drive out yeah. to the country or, or yeah. you know, whatever – I mean, Toronto has um, a lot of different parks and, and beaches and stuff like that that yeah. the dogs can explore. We have the island. So there's little trips that you can do. But then, you know, you have opportunities to to do, like, a really big event mm-hmm. like yours. Mm-hmm. And then that's going to be right. one of those things that, you know, it could be once a year that you do it, but it's going to yeah. be an amazing few days. Yeah. So, that leads us really well into um, why you're here yeah. to talk about the Rough Mudder. Yeah. So give us a bit of background. How how did it start? How did you and, and your partner 
get this going? Where did it come from? I asked too many questions. I well, apologize. <laughs> all at once. It's it's definitely a unique event. There's there's nothing quite like it, and and I'll get into that later. What makes it so unique? Um, we we bought a farm, a hundred acre farm. About uh, I think it's been eight years now, nine years. Mm-hmm. We bought it. And it is filled with forest and field and stream. Um, there's a vet clinic on it. My partner's a vet. Um, so that's the primary purpose of it. There's a barn and horses, but there's no house. We don't live there. Mm-hmm. That's sort of a retreat that we go to. And as soon as we bought it, we knew we wanted to offer it to the community, to have some purpose, not just for us, but to share it with the community because it it is... Fabulous. So we knew we wanted to do that. So we just, we didn't know how, but we knew we were going to make it part of the community. My partner's a vet, deals with, you know, unwell animals all the time. Mm -hmm. And understood that maybe some, like we've been talking about, maybe physical exercise and socializing would keep them mentally stimulated and keep them healthier longer. Mm -hmm. Um, Myself, I'm, I'm a paramedic. Um, I deal with sick people all the time, Um, but I'm also a personal trainer, and so I try and uh, be a little bit preventative in people getting sick, and I've been Mm -hmm. doing that for about 25 years. And so when we got the farm, um, one thing that I did was set up, uh, build trails, and run boot camps there. So, you know, the boot camps that we run indoors here, it's a similar idea, but we ran them outside, and they were called canine boot camps, so people would bring their dogs. Mm. Yeah. So we'd do a five-kilometer loop, and we'd run a little bit, and then we'd stop at a station and do some exercises, like hit workouts and that. Like, again, canine boot camps, that's not offered very often. No, uh, it's very anywhere. unique. Yeah. So you're out, you're running in the forest and the field. The dogs are off-leash, um, so, again, any dog with good recall would, would hang around with us. We'd stop at a station. There'd be... Uh, little places for them to drink there. They usually just hang out with us as we're doing our exercises. Then we'd run off to the next station. Mm-hmm. And that was amazing. And really just the the sense of community, having the dogs there, the sense of purpose in the people getting their workout and the dogs getting their social time plus a workout was really, it accomplished a lot. Right? Oh, yeah. Think about all those boxes yes. that you're yeah, ticking. Yeah, absolutely. So if you if you right? go earlier into our conversation yeah. about okay, what makes you happy? Yeah. What makes a dog happy? Yeah. Like, is there one that you miss? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I I, I don't think so. I, I we really, and 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 everybody who came just I mean it's just a good time, right? It's a good time had by all. You know, you you leave feeling tired and. And, and the dogs are tired, they're going to sleep well, they've been stimulated, there's always new dogs there, there's always new people in and out. So, yeah, yeah like you say, we've checked off all those boxes. And so just continued to build new trails, new stations, and, and then had, had the idea of maybe running a one-day really massive event. Right. Um, knowing that we couldn't have the dogs off-leash when we have that many dogs, mm-hmm. but still to be with their owner and... And running through these trails, you know, and and so really we took the time to um, build the trails up to a certain level where, you know, we could offer something that was that was really cool. And then in 2016, we felt that the trails were ready. We were finally uh, ready to offer this. And as we were building the trails, we kind of thought, well, you know, when we were stopping at exercise stations, there would be uh, like tires to run through and different fitness stations. And so we thought, well, instead of just a run with our dog, let's add obstacles. And okay. I love adventure racing, and mm-hmm. I was doing uh, obstacle courses, and and I love that. I love the challenge of you know running and then having to think and use my body to overcome these obstacles. And so we thought, well why don't we put in obstacles? So there'll be obstacles for the dogs, obstacles for the people, and the people and the dogs will have to work together to overcome these obstacles, right? What a great idea. That's really cool. Because you're not just thinking, okay, like, how do I get over... Give me an example of an obstacle. Well, even just a log, like a huge tree that's fallen over a path. Okay. 
like I'm going to straddle it. I'm going to jump it. I can, my dog's got to think of different ways. What if they're small and they can't, they can't get over it? Like, how are they going to do it? Are you going to have to work together and lift them up? Yeah. Right? There you go. So the dog's going to look at ways to get around to keep with you. And, And if it's an under, if it's under for the dog and you're on leash, what are you going to do? Right. You're going to have to crawl under, <laughs> yeah, right? Which is really challenging. Sure. It's a great workout having to crawl. Yeah, as absolutely. Pe- as, human, we, as kids, we did it all the time. But as, as adults, we've, we've forgotten what a great workout that is to get down on all fours and crawl around. Well, the thing that people forget is that we, we are meant to be in nature. Yeah. And um, I think I, I touched on it a little bit earlier about the, that feeling that you get when you're out with your dog just on a walk mm-hmm. where you're just in nature and whether you live in a city or or like in the country nature mm-hmm. is all around us we just choose to ignore it but in this uh scenario it's that's one of the main purposes yeah. is to literally get into nature 100 percent. Re- reconnect with with nature in your dog's natural environment and, and in, like you say in our natural environment so right? you, so you turn the the boot camp into the rough mutter, which yeah. which is this one. It started off one day. Started off as a one day event. Uh, we had to cap registration. We just weren't sure. We wanted to offer the best experience for everybody, dogs, people. So we capped it at one fifty for the first one. We we had I think ten people per 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 wave. We released them all at the same time. They okay. all left, and then you know twenty minutes later we <laughs> released another. We just didn't know how it would go, and right. and so we collected a ton of feedback. It was amazing, right? Because wow. there is nothing like this. The the even the the pictures of we had all these selfie spots where we right. thought was a good place to get a picture with your dog, and just it's just. The dogs are, you can just see the smiles oh, on yeah. the dog's faces, right? You can tell they when are, they're happy. They are so happy. Right? It's not just that they're panting. Their eyes are all lit up and they're challenged and they're just looking at their owners in a, oh my God, thank you so much for doing this with me, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's an experience specifically for you and your dog. Yeah. I mean, to, yeah. to spend, I always talk about quality time yes. W- yes. with your dog, whether it be on a walk or in a training class or in a group walk or I mean this is like at the pinnacle of yeah. the nth degree of what you can do this is something specifically yeah. for you and your dog to get out there have a lot of fun get dirty I'm yeah, assuming absolutely I think <laughs> sweaty you know, like. a lot of people are, are kind of turned off Ooh, it's a mutter am I gonna get dirty yeah you're gonna get dirty and after the first time you get dirty you don't care. You don't care. Because your dog is having an, an amazing time. And and the the thing about Rough Mudder, it's it's not you know, like I said, I did I did obstacle courses and all those races and that. It it's not like that. It is for anybody who has a dog who l- loves their dog mm-hmm. and just wants to be active. You, you, I not very many people run it. Right. <laughs> it this is this is sort of a walking through through so, the five kilometers. Right. It's a it's a taking your so time. So it's not a like a race no, where you're like even, competing no. and timing and all that kind of. It's not timed. Okay. We encourage everybody to take their time. Enjoy it. Right? right. Smell the road. Follow your dog's sense, like you were talking about yeah. how they want to stop and smell that mud and smell that. Watch them. Watch them. Watch them enjoy the moment. Right. Take that time to really. Almost like be a dog, live like a dog for the for that five kilometers and or three kilometers. There's a short course if people don't feel like they want to do the five k, but just really be in that moment. Feel the mud on you that you haven't felt since you were a kid. Yeah, don't get dirty. Watch your dog just try and figure out those obstacles and and it's it's not just about you and your dog. You're going to be surrounded by. Other people are having a crazy good time, right? The, all the different kinds of dogs. Last year we had three-legged dogs. We had blind dogs, wow. deaf dogs, tiny little dogs, huge uh, Great Danes and Mastiffs getting through it. So, And it's the same with the people, right? right? We had people. We had a couple of people who raced through it, and they timed themselves, sure. and that was really important to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then other people took hours. 
Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. There's no judgment. There's no ego at this event. Right. Um, so we call it the canine obstacle adventure. Okay. Because it's not a canine obstacle race. There's no race. There's right. nothing. You're not racing against anything. So you're anything. not like competing and no, stuff. No, okay, no, great. No competition. That's fantastic. No. Well, that's a really nice lead in to the uh, questions that we get from our audience. So every single podcast before the podcast airs, I always post on social media. Uh, Facebook, Instagram is the big one. Mm-hmm. And I solicit um, questions yeah. that people have before the podcast to say, Hey, if you want to get involved, if you have specific questions for this particular guest, submit them and we'll do our very best to answer them during the podcast. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you have questions that we don't answer today, put them in the comments section below and we'll do our very best to answer those questions after the podcast as well. But we got a lot of great questions Mm -hmm. that I think are going to help dispel some of the myths or misconceptions because even I, when I first... Uh, started doing research for the podcast, I made a lot of assumptions based on the human um, race yeah. things that are, are similar. And and a lot of it is, is, is different because yes. this is specifically for dogs and specifically for people to do something yeah. with their dogs, yeah. right? So yeah. it's not about the person and, and their ego. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of the first questions that we got is, do you need to be fit? No. Okay. No. Um, we're not We're not accessible to the point where someone in a wheelchair could access it, unfortunately. Okay. Um, but we, we've, all ages, right? We had seven-year-old kids up to, to 75. Okay. So wow. If you're, like, we do have a short three-kilometer course, and then we have the longer 5K course. Uh, most people do the 5K, again, because you're just taking your time and you're, you're enjoying it with your dog. You're making your way through the challenges. There's 90 obstacles. Wow, okay. Okay, so, I mean, we're talking, and people, they hear obstacle, and they think barrier. Right. But an obstacle for us, we tried to really make sure that the obstacles were natural. Right. Uh, We used a lot of recycled um, equipment, recycled, uh, so a lot of tires. So we didn't, because when we bought the property, there was a lot of leftover um, equipment and stuff. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to just throw it onto the landfill. So we really thought of ways to make those into obstacles. Safe, obviously. For sure. Um, But something that a dog would see as as natural. So a lot of um, fallen logs. Okay. A lot of logs built into different shapes of obstacles. Uh, So a lot of unders, so crawling under through the mud, uh, a lot of like netting and, and through that. Okay. So you're getting dirty. But the, the obstacles are, you can go around all of them if you if you don't want. Okay. There's some that are more challenging and they're only made for the people. So right. we have a ninja line. So you're hanging and you're trying to make your way hanging and moving to the next uh, hanging obstacle. And at the end, there's a treat. So if you make it to the end, you get a treat for your dog. <laughs> That's great. Right? We have I thought a... you meant a treat for the person. No, no, no. you got to work for your yeah. dog. Treat. Okay. We have a climbing wall. So you start at one end and you make your way across. And at the end, again, you grab a treat for your dog. So it's all, there's always something linking the two of you as a team. Oh, that's fantastic. Right? And then there's some just dog only where there's some ramps. Okay. Teeter totters. So some of the dogs that have, we get a lot of agility dogs who who are comfortable with that. But if you don't want to do it, if your dog's not going to do it, that's okay. Just walk around. Okay. So it's right? for all fitness levels, Absolutely. all age levels, not just for the human side, yeah. but like for, the dog for, side, for your yeah. dog side as well. So Absolutely. if your dog isn't like super athletic, yeah. it's okay if they're yeah. little, like little dogs. You know, dogs. if you can... You, if you can pick your dog up, if they don't like the water, carry them through the water obstacles because there's some creek crossings. There's okay. quite a few creek crossings. It's in June, so we want to keep you cool as well, right? It might yeah. be hot. That's a good point. Yeah. And you can always just sit down. Your dog's not going to mind. If you need a break, just sit down at any time, hang out. We've got <laughs> tons of volunteers um, that we'll have on the course. Okay. Um, that'll be, you know, able to help you out if you need it, uh, give yeah. you advice, cheer you on. Yeah, okay, awesome. Yeah. So uh, that is a great lead into the next question is if somebody isn't, uh, it came from a non-dog owner. Yeah. So. Okay, they wanted to come and, and They want to come and see, 
hang out yeah. or somebody also asks like can you volunteer because they love dogs yeah. but they don't have a dog yeah. so they're interested in the volunteer side yeah, of the absolutely event. this this event is full of volunteers on uh, with a ton of different skills we've got um, registration volunteers parking volunteers and then we have dozens of volunteers out on the course and they're there just they're there just for that to cheer people on oh, that's there great. to we've got um a slew of first aid volunteers we've got paramedics on the course nurses on the course so we've got safety taken care of we've got vets vet techs on the course so the dogs are taken care of from <laughs> a safety perspective as well that's great um, but you know, anybody who wants to come out and be part of it, absolutely. Just, you know, below you've got our contact information. Just uh, let us know. You get Yeah, to, we'll put, we'll put yeah. links to all your social media yeah. in the description yeah, absolutely. below. We would so. love to have anybody who wants to volunteer. We've also got volunteers who are running the, oh, okay. the course. Because it's a two-day event, um, we... Generally, our volunteers work a full day, but there's also some who are just working for part of the day. Okay. So they'll work part of the day, and then they'll they'll um, get a get a discounted rate on their registration. Okay. Um. So they can That's do great. that as well. So it's it's we've got um, a ton of volunteer photographers coming out. Oh wow. Yeah. So That's just to just to work on their skills. Because yep. it's live action, right? So it's a bit challenging to to work on that. So we've got a, a quite a few uh, photographers who want to volunteer their time so any photographers out there you're more than welcome to come out that's wicked yeah, yeah that's great yeah. awesome did anybody ask about how do we get clean at the end no but that's a great, that's that's a great question right that's a great you're, question. you're really muddy <laughs> um so at the end we have clearview fire is coming out and they have their hose and they wash down everything it's like, <laughs> it's like the last obstacle everybody loves it get out, really? yeah that's amazing yeah, so and their favorite part was always coming back to the firefighters <laughs> <laughs> getting sprayed by the fire it's always, it's always hot out yes. on rough matter weekend so okay. it's, it's the solstice weekend so it's going to be the longest day of the year longest day of the year what right? a great way to celebrate the, the longest day of the year i always try to think of something Summer to do solstice. on that day there you go. so that's fantastic now you know yeah. that's great so that's how you get clean the firefighters are going to spray you down both you and your dog that sounds like a lot of fun <laughs> honestly right I, I, I would, I would think it'd be fun for the firefighters yeah. as well. It is, oh, yeah, <laughs> right. They love it. Yeah, we're so we're we're really uh, grateful that they're able to 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 yeah come and be there as part of the fun. And you know what's happening this year, which is really cool. We've talked about you know socializing with your dog, mm -hmm. um, and that, and then the the sense of community that Rough Mudder brings when we bring all these dog lovers together and all these dogs. It's an amazing. Uh, it's an amazing sense of community. Um, we're also, two things we're doing this year to build on that that offering back to the community, which was our original thought when we bought the farm. Mm -hmm. Firstly, we're offering this year, um, we're waiving all registration fees for vendors. Oh, okay. We really want to showcase local small businesses. It can be tough getting started as a, you know, in Toronto, there's so many amazing canine related businesses whether mm -hmm. it's clothing or food or treats or toys right yeah. and so we wanted to get rid of any barriers for them and getting their products out there or any creators or anything that they're photography so we've waived that fee for them so that we can have a huge vendor area where everybody coming can check out all those those things so that's one way that we've really committed to supporting the community mm -hmm. and secondly uh, we approached the local like in Stainer where the event is being held it's held in Clearview Township okay and so we thought wouldn't it be cool if not just our little farm could be involved in a dog related event but what if the whole town could be involved and so we brought that to them and they were so excited about it like a scavenger hunt no but the they might do that. <laughs> Clearview. <laughs> you can have that one. For right? Free. There we yeah. go. So all the businesses in the town are going to have their windows decorated in a, in a dog-related theme. They're going to have products that are dog-related. They're going to have just everybody can come with their dogs, check out whether there's food, there's different services there. So the whole town, Dog Days of Summer is kind of going to be the theme. It's going to be That's fantastic, amazing. right? So you have somewhere to go after you're done your run at, at uh, 
Rough Mudder, you can go and explore the town and see what they have to offer you. And, and just the Castaners is the cutest little town. One of the things I, I always tell people is that dogs should bring people yes, together. Yes, not absolutely. Separate right? them. Yeah. You know, keep yeah. them from each other. Yeah. And when, when you talk about bringing people together, you think about community. Yeah. And this is like just taking it to yeah. the nth degree. Okay, yeah. I have a controversial question from Erica. Okay. Calling you out, Erica. Hey, Erica. In big trouble. Uh oh. Here we go. Uh, what about aggressive or non socialized dogs? Naughty dogs, we, we call them. You know what? We had a few at the, the previous events. We don't want them to miss out on this. Okay. But maybe it's not the right place for a dog who is totally stressed out in a really busy space. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of dogs and a lot of people. We're going to have probably about 500 people every day there. Okay. Um, so it might just not be a happy place for the dog. We want dogs to be happy. Yes. So if being in an, in an environment with a lot of dogs, with a lot of people, causes them stress, that's not a happy happy place. Well, you know what? We're going to talk about how to prepare. Yeah. For the event. So yeah. let, let's say, for example, you are interested yeah. and you're like, this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to get a couple of my friends together. Maybe yeah. I'll call up my sister. Maybe I'll, you know. Make it a family affair. Do yeah. something like with some friends that I haven't seen in a long time. And, you know, just use this as a reason to get together yeah. and to get the dogs together. Because, again, like doing stuff with the dogs as a reason to see people maybe that you haven't seen mm -hmm. in a while. You know, people lose touch sometimes and they're like, well, you live in blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I live over here. Well, let's get do this little, together. get yeah. the dogs together yeah. and like go out and have fun. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're going to talk about how to prepare because, yeah. um, you know, I, I think it's one of those things that people should be curious about. Yeah. It's yeah. like, oh, what do I need to bring? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I think where we can start maybe is how to prepare your dog. So yeah. let's say you want to participate in this type of event mm -hmm. and you're concerned about your dog's social mm -hmm. um, manners mm -hmm. or, or whatever. Yeah. What a great opportunity to then address it as a way to prepare for the event. Right. To have a goal maybe of all your training and your and – your, yeah. Your communications with your dog. Yeah. To say to you, so if you're thinking to yourself, okay, other people are going to be doing this really cool thing with their dogs. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be left out, and I don't want my dog to be left out. I know that this is in June. Yeah. Now it's April. Yeah. Almost April. Uh, we're recording this at the end of March, but yeah. it will air in April. That is plenty of time yeah. to work towards that goal of, Want to go to the Rough Mudder. Yeah. What a great, like, tangible goal to say, okay, I want to get my dog socialized yeah. properly enough to then be able to attend this event yeah. and use it as a celebration. Absolutely. Right? Sure. Yeah, an achievement. Um, we did have a few dogs with the full open muzzles on. Okay. Again, so they got to a point where... Uh, they they got their dog comfortable in the large space, but there were there may have been some triggers, and they weren't sure that they could stop those triggers from happening for the dog being aggressive, so they just kept that on as a safety, right? It, it like a yes. It was a, a a wider one, so the dog could breathe. It it you know, um, it kept it let other people know that maybe just keep your distance a little bit with this with this pup, and right. and and then I think. Maybe that dog going through that experience and having a good time, yes. having a positive experience with all those other dogs around may have really, you know, shifted the way the dog was thinking about being in a group, right? Well, one one of the problems that people encounter with dogs that have issues with other dogs mm -hmm. is that they tend to then avoid yeah. other dogs, yeah. right? So my dog barks at another dog actually that's one of the reasons why mj is here because yeah. she has some issues with some dogs yeah. and um that's why she's doing a boot camp here yeah. but 
when you are in that situation where you're avoiding other dogs, like, okay, I see another dog coming down the street. I'm going to cross the street to avoid that dog. That's not going to make it better. But working towards, okay, I know there's going to be like 500 dogs there. And you can get them to the point where they're... They're, they're going to be okay. They're going to really have so many opportunities yeah. to engage with other dogs and at least... But even if they're not, like, interacting, yeah, they're still around yeah. all the other dogs. And that counts. I can't say enough the level of positive energy at this event mm. is phenomenal. Right. And, and energy isn't something that we can quantify, but I just think that that would, a dog would feed off on that. This was a good time. This was a positive energy thing. I mean, there's definitely going to be some dogs who it's not, it's, it's not the place for them. If they get stressed in large, large groups, it's, it's just not the place. Unfortunately, we can't accommodate everybody. But I think for the most part, like you say, if you set a goal, and you, you have these micro goals that you achieve in getting the dog comfortable. Uh, I think it would be a really positive reinforcement for all the work that they had done. Right? Oh, absolutely. And I mean, that that's one of those things where if you don't have something specific in mind mm-hmm. as a reason to do it, you might say, oh, well, you know, it's okay. I can just, I can live with not exposing yeah. my dog to other dogs yeah. in, in a daily routine. But because there's no reason, yeah. there's no specific motivation or mm-hmm. driver. Or and or, and yeah. this event could be, okay, I'm going to join some yeah. social media groups, do some research on the internet, mm-hmm. talk to some other dog owners, maybe on my own. Yeah. You know, go to a dog park and say, look, you know, your dog is fantastic. Yeah. You know, is there any resources? I mean, I have a slew of videos and stuff on yeah. socializing your dog so yeah. there is help out there yeah, for sure. and whether you live in a remote community or you live in a big urban environment i think there to your point there's a community yeah. now when we talk about community i would imagine there's going to be a big online community that comes yeah. from it as well could you talk a bit to that yeah absolutely our facebook group um, there's photos shared all the times, there's stories of their dogs as they're getting ready for rough mudder, you know, especially with spring here now, we're starting to get the pictures of the muddy dogs, oh, training for, <laughs> training for rough mudder, and they're fantastic, right? One of the benefits of social media, I, I always tell mm-hmm. people, like, there's lots of downsides to social media, but there's also lots of upsides to it, yeah. so, um, you have this great online community mm-hmm. on Facebook you were saying yeah, so how absolutely. many members do you have on your I Facebook I think we've group? got about 750 now okay. so far um, yeah I think so yeah, so, so it's something that you can participate absolutely. into leading yeah. up and after yeah. the event absolutely and and build on that if there's people that you find that are in your area you might meet up or um, uh, get the dogs together before um, we've got a lot of a lot of groups entering a lot of families um, we have a a reduced rate on a 10, we call it the pack attack, where if you bring <laughs> 10 people, 10 dogs, you get $100 off your registration. So a lot of people are going for that, just to bring a group of people and their dogs together and spend the day there. Oh, totally. Like, it's great for the dogs, great for the people, Absolutely. right? Um, but yeah, that Facebook page is, is a, a good sort a, again, another dog community, right? We've we post things about do- dog-related things, lots of pictures. People get to post their pictures. They always like to see their dogs on, on That's social awesome. media. Right? That's awesome. Let's talk about the Guinness World Record attempt. Yeah. Because so, that's very cool. Again, we were, we were going for community building. Okay. And um, I one, one of the things at boot camp, what we would follow up with after when I was running my boot camps, um, I would run a doga class. Doga? Dog Do- yoga. Dog yoga, okay. Right? Yes, that's very cool. Yeah. Dogs are, they do downward dog. They do all their stretches, right? Name, They're natural yogis. Yeah, absolutely. So, so one of the things we looked into was there actually a world record for doga? And you know what? There was. Get out. Yeah. Okay. 274 people got together with their dogs in, I think it was Hong Kong. 
in a mall, actually. <laughs> I don't know how they found out. And, and they did a doga class, and they set a Guinness World Record. Okay. And so we thought, oh, we can definitely beat that. Okay. So we're going to, on the Sunday of Rough Mudder, around noon, we're going to, we're go- going for 300. 300. Yeah. 300 people with their dogs. Doing in yoga. In that one space, doing yoga with their dogs. Wow. It's a lot of people and a lot that's, of dogs. It's a lot of people. I'm, I'm, I think I'm, it's totally doable though, right? You, you want to sign up for that. You don't have to sign up for Rough <laughs> Mudder. Just come on Sunday. It doesn't cost anything at noon. <laughs> and just set Be a world record. Be part of history. Record, Be right? part of history. Dogstery. Right? You know, I always tell people, if you're ambitious and, and you fail, at mm. least you tried something That's ambitious, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. And you guys have <clears throat> the story behind what you're doing, I think, is really mm-hmm. touching. And mm-hmm. what really people should, should key in on is that understanding that, yes, this is a fun event. Mm-hmm. Yes, this is a lot of, of, of fun for the dog. It's a fundraiser for the Farley Foundation. Oh, okay. So yep. you do fundraising we, we for charity? We do fundraising for charity. We're, uh, Farley Foundation uh, raises money for people who can't afford, if a dog needs a large operation or t- a life-saving operation, that money goes to help those um, people who may not be able to afford it so that they can keep their dogs and keep them healthy. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So, sorry. Didn't no, interrupt that. Not but, at all. Yeah. So if, if, you're, if you're going after something big, and mm-hmm. keep in mind, it takes a lot of bravery mm-hmm. to be a pioneer and mm-hmm. to do something that hasn't been done before mm-hmm. and to put yourself out there and to take a risk mm-hmm. and to and to be, you know, the tip of the spear, I call it. That's always like the most difficult thing mm-hmm. to do. But if you're ambitious and you're saying like, hey, let's try and get 300 people together. Yeah. It motivates other people. It gets people going and be like, hey, let's become a part of something bigger than yeah. just ourselves. Yeah. And participate in something really cool. Yeah. And y- you get this amazing kind of, I don't want to call it synergy because like that's straight out of the 80s. But it's like this momentum. Momentum, for sure. So Momentum what a, of, of, yeah, of, of, of good, positive energy, of... Again, that community. You know, we talked about social media, and I I love social media for a lot of things. There is the talk that it is alienating us. Yes. Yeah. From that um, one-on-one, you know, meeting up. But but we can create community in these ways. Through the Facebook, we create like-minded community. Um, Through the Doga world record, I mean, that it's... It's, it's, it's just fun. Yeah. Right? But there's going to be 300 like-minded people, like you say, who want to be part of something really fun and different and, 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 and positive. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you look at the bigger picture, because I like a bigger picture yeah. kind of thing. So you can think of this as one event. Or you can think of it as something to work towards. Mm-hmm. Something to celebrate, mm-hmm. and then something to carry forward mm-hmm. in your dog's daily life. Yeah, right. So, so, so we talked about early. We started the podcast uh, talking about what makes your dog happy. How mm-hmm. how do you? They give us so much mm-hmm. joy mm-hmm. and so much happiness. How can we give back? And leading up to something like this, and and going to it, and having a lot of fun, and in experiencing. That joy, because no, I'm not going to convince you, Mm -hmm. the audience, that this is something spectacular. I I can, I've never attended myself, but I can, I can see. Yeah. Like, to me, it's intuitive. It just makes sense. Yeah. But think of what can happen afterwards. Mm -hmm. So you go to the event, you have a ton of fun. You meet a lot of great people. Mm -hmm. Your dogs have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. They get dirty. You get dirty. Then you get hosed down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the most important thing for me, because I'm an HR guy, yeah. right? So I always talk about what do you do after, right? Right. So, yeah, you go out and you have a lot of fun. But then what do you take from it? Well, maybe you take some lifelong memories. Mm-hmm. Maybe you get some friendships. Mm-hmm. Can you put a tangible value on how val- mm-hmm. like how amazing that would mm-hmm. be to be like, Hey, 
I met one of my great friends mm-hmm. at the Rough Mudder. Yeah, they and had a Bernese Mountain Dog too. And we got together and <laughs> so on and so forth. Or I met somebody who lived in the same community yeah. as I did or whatever. And now we go on walks together. Yeah. We go on hikes amazing? together. We do this together. Yes. We do that together. Yeah. We planned a camping trip for August. Yada, yada, yada. Right. Like, do you, do you see how, like, one thing Absolutely. can, like, lead to another, lead yeah. to another? It just builds on it, yeah. And then think about how much happier your dog is going to be just from, like, that doing that one thing. Because it gives you an excuse. Let's yeah. be frank. It gives you something to get out there yeah. and do something that's already organized. It's already all the details are taken care yeah. of. You don't have to do any planning, yeah. really, or any coordination of what we're going to do here what we're going to do there it's already done for you Mm -hmm. and then it then gives you that motivation to then say i really really love that my dog yeah loved it yeah we we exactly we talk about reconnecting with our friends we talk about reconnecting with family you know maybe we're losing touch and and this one of the things we keep saying is you know um less less screen time more green time (laughs) And, and it, it applies to our dogs too. Totally. Right. We may get a little bit distracted with our, with our life. And this is an opportunity, like you say, to really re- reconnect or connect with our dog on a level that we just might not have the opportunity to at other times in the, in the year. Right. And that's amazing. And it's, and I had, you know, I had, we had so much feedback after that. Just thank you. Thank you. And we had one person write and say, you know, uh, my dog passed away shortly after, and I just want to thank you so much for that opportunity. It was like it was the opportunity of a lifetime to to connect with her before she passed. Yeah, what a and I just like that is a, that, if thing. if anything that is exactly what Rough Mudder is about. Oh, totally! Like connecting like that and having those memories. She has pictures, and the dog was having a great time. Right, just you could just you could just feel it. I, <laughs> you could just feel it, and you can Sorry. just when people talk about right <clears throat> dogs have passes, like you can do something amazing with them, yeah. and because you just don't know, yeah, yeah, you don't right? know if, whether your dog is going to live another ten years or like a, another you know ten months yeah. or whatever it may be. The point is, you give them those yeah. experiences yeah. And, and enjoy their them while they're the, with you. It's the dog's only fault is that yeah. their lives are so short. Yeah, they can't control it. Right? You know, I don't get yeah. too, too upset or depressed because I'm very... <laughs> it was supposed to be a happy, oops, <laughs> a happy okay. comment. Yes, no. I yeah. just, uh, when it comes to... I've lost dogs before, yeah. so it's very... Yeah. So, I think the, the positive thing to take out of it is... Act now. Do yeah. something with your dogs. Don't yeah. wait until, yeah. you know, uh, oh, I'll do something with them next year or yeah. whatever the case may be. This could be the start of something really great. And uh, I don't think there's uh, a downside in terms of, you know, having a great experience and having a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's definitely something uh, I think is a great idea. I'll tell you what. Why don't you guys... Comment below, because obviously we're not going to cover everything. No. That's not the point of the podcast. No. The podcast isn't to cover everything. It's just to kind of get the conversation going. Yeah. So if you guys have any advice as to what you would bring on an event like this. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're going to have a lot of people who have done it in the past. Um, watch us. Who, who are going to watch this. And okay. they could probably comment on what they would bring. Next okay. time, and uh, if if they comment to me, I'll I'll comment on the on the site as well as to what they suggested. For sure, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Okay, well, in terms of something that is going to make your dog happy, I mean, think of all the things. Uh, make your own list, mm-hmm. and none of those things are are going to be like you know out of reach for the average person but do we actually take the time Mm -hmm. and effort Mm -hmm. to actually do it Mm -hmm. and and most importantly i would say is think about your your dogs in terms of 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 like 
we take vacations. We we go out to dinner. We go we to do, retreat sometimes. We do all this sure. stuff. Yeah. But how many things do we just yeah. do for our yeah. dogs? Yeah. Okay. And then if this inspires you to then just go maybe once a month or something like that to yeah. a, a trail near you just because you've experienced how much fun it was, yeah. think of the after effect that it's going to have on your dog i mean it, it's going to be fantastic for you and it's going to be fantastic yeah. for your dog if you disagree with me that's okay i don't care because it's the <laughs> internets and the internets there's always somebody be like oh no you're wrong that's Absolutely. not the case that's fine really if you don't want to do it yeah. that's okay you probably have other ways of making your dog happy yeah. and that's fine too yeah. right somebody with a pool might say look i have a pool it's fine for my dog yeah. that's great yeah. but I think something like this is really cool and really fun. Yeah. And I think you're going to get to meet a lot of people yeah. and do a lot of great stuff. It, it's it, Yeah, it's just a day filled with joy. Just dog joy, dog happiness, dog smiles. And, and the people are, are there to witness it. And yeah, it's... And if you're like me and you like talking about your dogs uh, all right? day long. All day long. People are going to want to listen to you talk about your dog. <laughs> right? Where else can you talk about your dog and, and everybody it's okay. will listen? Yeah, for sure. And, and you can take all the pictures <clears throat> of your dogs and everybody will support you in that. Here, let me get that picture for you. Oh, man. Think of the Instagram right? pictures that you're going to get from that. The selfies it's, are just... It's going to be ridiculous. Because by the by the end, the dog's tongues are down to here, yeah. right? They're just <laughs> in bliss. <laughs> this blissful face on your dog. You, you, they'll sit there for your selfies. You know how they're usually moving around when you're trying to get a yeah, selfie? Yeah, yeah, yeah.